talking everything an investor needs to understand before actually getting involved in the markets. Ted Oakley is the founder of Harvard of Oxbow Advisors. Ted, welcome back to Kitco. Thank you, David. Glad to be We're talking everything an investor needs to understand before actually getting involved in the markets with Ted Oakley. money into it 
Well, they think it's a, some people think it's a tulip bubble scam. How do you respond to that? Yes, uh, and uh, that has uh, been the reality in some cases as well. Uh, you know, a lot of bad actors, uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know projects which uh, you know um, promise people to make uh, rich over the night. They collected money and then they went off. So uh, yeah, there were some factors which got, uh, which uh, which made people uh, kind of uh, apprehensive about uh, with cryptocurrency. But it's, uh, in terms of uh, when when they start researching about <laughs> it and they, they start reading about it, you see that yeah, you know, there are more good actors and more good projects than, than the bad actors. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the rise of central bank digital currencies and what that first of all what that means for the regular everyday consumer. Do you think our form of payment in that case when CBDCs will be launched will be drastically changed? Uh, well, uh, CBDCs uh, in terms of uh, definition itself uh, they don't uh, you know cryptocurrency is a de decentralized currency. But if the government is uh, launching its own CBDC and want the people to use only the CBDC, again the whole concept of decentralization gets defeated. Um, so we will see an option in terms of uh, in the specific countries, but uh, but I don't think like, you know CBDCs uh, will have a lot of impact uh, on on the global cryptocurrency uh, you know market as such. That's one thing. So, uh, in terms of uh, you know retail investors and institutional investors, we might see uh, you know the retail investors uh, adopting more on the CBDCs. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm not sure, very sure how the institutional investors will react on uh, CBDCs. Is there still a need for Bitcoin if CBDCs are introduced? Definitely, because Bitcoin is the global currency, and uh, Bitcoin will be uh, will always continue to uh, to take the lead. Uh, I mean, it's a global currency. Cryptocurrency in the sense that you know it is not uh, uh, it, it, no no government in the world has a hold on it, right? Unlike CBDCs, where uh, you know that particular country will have a hold on it. So uh, Bitcoin is truly decentralized, uh, uh, and uh, you know it should the world the way uh, how digital currencies can work. So it it took the lead and it will always be off the top, I believe. Let's talk about uh, what it means for investors, the adoption of digital currencies, the digital company. What can investors be positioned right now with their capital that would most closely align with this transition? Um, everybody has a different view on it, but I particularly uh, uh, you know, look for currencies that have got uh, a, a major business case and uh, a major utility in them. So, any yeah. So, so all, all the protocol based uh, currencies uh, I definitely feel li like you know the top protocols and layer 1 and layer 2 protocols. I feel that uh, you know they, they definitely hold a good future. Uh, secondly some of like uh, some of the top exchange based coins have done really well. If you look at uh, you know BNB or if you look at uh, Pancakes uh, app or uh, these sort of uh, 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 coins, they, they do well. Uh, even OKX is also doing well. So uh, exchange based coins also do well in the long run. What's your personal view of Bitcoin? Do you think it has more price appreciation and growth left? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, Bitcoin is more of a store of value and uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we are already seeing the, uh, massive uh, growth now, now that the, uh, the first ETF has been introduced, Bitcoin ETF has been introduced, uh, we are again seeing another uh, bull run. And uh, I personally feel that this will continue till the end of the year. We, will, we might see uh, uh, Bitcoin going up to 100,000 uh, for uh, you know the, the crypto export this year. Okay. Tell us about Leo Pay and how Leo Pay fits, in, fits into the blockchain ecosystem. Well, uh, Leo Pay is a super app with uh, more than 40 services and products all in one uh, platform. Uh, you know, we we are working towards uh, having a single sign-on so that the customers do not have to use multiple apps or, or uh, web platform for multiple services. They can get everything in one platform. We, we are already live with more than 10 services and uh, we are going live with more and more services and products every month. Uh, we are going live with our own cryptocurrency exchange by end of this year. Uh, and uh, we, we are going live with our uh, travel platform through which uh, you know, people can book flights, hotels uh, using crypto. 
Um, so, so we already have a uh, like you know we are we are uh, on top of uh, of uh, our execution uh, roadmap and and uh, you know you will see lot more services and products uh, in, in the coming months. Uh, one of our other uh, core product is uh, Leotech Labs, through which we are uh, building uh, uh, hardware products like uh, Leo Tab, uh, Leo Watch, and uh, uh, Leo Phones. These are like fully encrypted uh, uh, phones. And uh, we, we are already showcasing these products here in uh, the uh, Future Blockchain Summit. And it will be in the market soon uh, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, we are also coming up with a FinTech Accelerator where we will integrate uh, and uh, incubate uh, you know, uh, promising FinTech projects. Good. All right. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Today. My pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for watching Kiko News. We'll have more for you. Kiko News. Special coverage of the Future Blockchain Summit is brought to you by Cook Finance, a revolution 